So um, the first slide is our famous drone picture. We've now done it twice with smashing success. So this year, um, with our message of inclusivity, we decided to put you along as our message. And the children really did an excellent job getting into formation in no time at all. So um, just to start this evening, I want to speak about the collaborative culture we have at Menon Center. Um, this year, we welcomed 17 new staff members in all areas from clerical, support staff, teaching, special areas, and service providers. So indoctrinating that many new staff members um, can be quite a feat, but they quickly integrated with the culture we have at Menon Center, and we did a lot of team building and worked together around our vision and our mission. Um, Superintendent's Day, we did some self-portraits on ceramic tiles, and that's what you see there in the um, photo. We strongly believe in a collective responsibility for all of our kids, and that starts with how we treat each other. Um, our vision is to unlock the potential of every child, and we hope that our children see themselves in us as educators, and we are going to do everything it takes to work together to reach that goal. We had the challenge of um, coming up with a new logo. Ours had gotten a little tired, and we decided we want something fresh. So we did a lot of research. We involved the kids. Um, our SEL committee did quite a bit of work. And we discovered that our, all of our work around empathy, there's an actual symbol for empathy. And we gave it to all of our students. We just showed them the symbol without telling them what it means and asked them to have some classroom <coughs> conversations about what they thought it meant. Children had all sorts of ideas about hands reaching out to touch one another, trying to understand both sides, two sides coming together. And the empathy symbol actually stands for reaching out to the other, then opening up to truly understand each other, creating a world in which we can all get along. So last spring, we changed our logo for the O and Menden Center to be the empathy symbol, and now we have that on all of our spirit wear and our things that we have um, at our school. Very simple, but very enduring, and the children were excited about it and could speak to it as well, which was great. Full day kindergarten, I'm sure you've heard lots and lots about full day K. Uh, what a gift it has been. And I want to share what a gift it's been for the students, but also for our building. Um, so for the kids, they have the gift of time to advance with their skills. They have increased student independence, their resilience has grown, their problem solving, their coping skills, they have stronger relationships. Our teachers are able to deliver high quality instructional programs with um, excellent resources in a way that's reliable and viable. We have earlier intervention in place uh, with great supports for kids. But for our building as a whole, kindergarten, kindergarten has been a tremendous gift. We feel a greater sense of community. Our relationships are stronger with our kindergarten students because they're with us all day. We have a buddy program with older students. Um, there, during lunch and recess, we paired them intentionally with the third graders so they would have a little bit of an older child to kind of be a mentor and a buddy and help. And also, so the lunch monitors didn't have kindergarten and first grade in the cafeteria at the same time. We wanted to make sure they came back. Um, so that was very intentional in our lunch schedule. We put them right in the middle of our lunch cycle in the middle of the day, and that was wildly successful for us. And to see the relationships that have blossomed with the kids and just how they've grown. They're a part of our assemblies, our school-wide celebrations, things that traditionally they weren't able to be a part of because they weren't there in the afternoon or they weren't there in the morning. Even little things like hearing their birthdays right on the announcements. The PM kindergarten kindergartners never heard that. So it's very exciting, um, all of those things. But we also have a gift of many smiles, hugs, stories, and victories. So if you ever want to make your day, just stand outside while they're coming in in the morning, and it's fantastic. <laughs> And they've all grown into their backpacks. They start the year with that much <laughs> taller than they are. They have absolutely grown into them. One of our really important initiatives at Men and Center this year was around classroom meetings and building empathy and culture in our classrooms. So we spent Superintendent's Day doing staff development around morning meeting. Morning meeting sets the tone for respectful learning. It creates a climate of trust. It motivates the students to feel significant. It creates empathy and encourages collaboration, and it supports social, emotional, and academic learning for our kids. 
And one of the most important things morning meeting does is every child is greeted by another child by name every day. And we made a commitment very on, early on as a staff that we would learn to pronounce every child's name correctly, we would teach the children to pronounce each other's names correctly. That was something really important as we started the year. Um, to hear the children greet each other by name is fabulous in the morning. There's actually four parts to a morning meeting. They begin with a greeting, then they share. It could be a topic the teacher posed. It might be a deep thought to reflect on. It could be sharing what you did over the weekend, any number of things. Then there's a group activity designed to get the kids working together, up and moving, kind of a little um, brain break before they get going. And then the teacher gives them a morning message that is from the teacher to the students. So um, as with many of the slides tonight, we've been asking our kids, what do you think about morning meeting? What has it done for you? So we did interview our third graders to find out what morning meeting means to them. Some of the things they told us, morning meeting calms me down, puts me in the green zone, because before that I feel really rushed in the morning, makes me smile because everyone is greeted, gets me ready for school. So it was really nice to hear out of the mouths of the children how that sets the tone for their day. Menon Center is one of the two elementary um, buildings in the district that hosts our English as a New Language program. We're now up to 32 students at Menon Center, uh, representative of 12 languages in nine countries. And we have ENL students at all grade levels. And there's a combination model of an integrated co-taught with a teacher in the classroom with a gen ed teacher providing support. And then there's also pull-up support for the children. And it's been fantastic to see how the other students have learned to work with new language learners, how to communicate, how to support, how to help, what to do, what not to do. Um, and the children have just grown tremendously and felt such a part of our school. It was so fun to see the fifth grade chorus perform and all of our fifth graders in the ENL program were in the chorus and it was just awesome to see them up there singing away and um, having the time of their life. So we are so grateful for the program. It's been wonderfully successful and we hope to have many more years and many more students. So I feel like it's been forever since I spoke to you but we've had two significant learning celebrations at Menon Center since I was last here to report. Um, Last June 2018, we had STEM Day. So we invite parents, grandparents, friends to come and um, present to the children around science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. We had 15 workshops that were offered. And every year, the workshops get more and more sophisticated. So this year, children learned about um, things like how technology is used to save rhinos from poachers, um, building an iPod game, recycling storm water, and wastewater and optics as well as chemical reactions and those are just a few of the things um, happening but again what was so neat about it it was our families teaching our children with their talents and they're always so gracious to volunteer um, and we're so appreciative this past march we had our international day our children did the announcements in 15 different languages that week um, we had reloads in the classroom that connected to our countries represented and to celebrate diversity. We had 41 countries represented this year and table displays in all of our hallways that became continents and it was grandparents and parents and family and friends and just the storytelling and the artifacts that just brought learning to life and really cool to celebrate who we are as men and center. There were cultural shows and performances. There were 23 workshops that children could pick and choose from, everything from music to culture to dance, food, um, and the kids had passports to document their travels for the day. So we really enjoy our international day. So in the area of social emotional learning, we're still doing our principal's book. Um, just a couple of the titles we had this year, I Am Peace, a book about mindfulness, and then I Am Human, a book of empathy. And we started the year with I Am Peace, a book of mindfulness, because we're really looking to build self-awareness in our kids. They can't be empathetic until they can recognize the emotions in themselves. So we spent a lot of time with that and then moved into empathy, which was also the focus of our work last year. 
And very often with the book of the month, I ask children to write, um, and they give me wonderful responses. And I just wanted to share with you a couple of things I heard from our kids. Um, I just want to read a response to you. It's not on the slide, but um, I'm going to change the student's name in it to Emmett. That's not really the student's name. But here's what one of our fifth graders had to say. Last year, Emmett and I didn't really get along. I always looked in the other direction, not paying attention to empathy. But when I moved out of this year, I had been in Emmett's class for three years. Probably a coincidence, but it didn't feel like one. Not at all. So I took a leap, a possibility. I started listening in on him, watching him alone sometimes. So I talked to him, listened to what he felt. He is a good kid. I listened to how he felt on the inside. I listened to his side of the story. I started talking to him more often, helping him, guiding him, and now we're best friends and I'm proud. Everyone is different and that's a good thing. And that was out of the, one of our fifth graders. And we're hearing stories and stories like that over and over again and it's wonderful to see um, from our children and how much they care <coughs> for each other. Our children have also um, taken some time to write about mindfulness and how it's helped them in the classroom. In lieu of a book study this year, we purchased Mindful Kids, which is a set of 50 cards for all the teachers. And every card has a different mindfulness strategy. So it helps with focus, attention, kindness, feeling. And so teachers have been trying out all these different strategies, sharing how they're working, sharing what works at certain grade levels, and they're very easy tool um, that they have at their fingertips and they've really enjoyed those. We also have kindness postcards this year. So you see the You Belong photo. Those are actually postcards celebrating when our kids um, do a kind act for someone. We're sending those in the mail to celebrate that. And just, you can kind of see on the slide, but some of the responses from kids about how they use mindfulness. I like the one in the middle. Um, one last strategy you can use is to let it go. <laughs> These are some strategies you can use when you're focused on your worries. And just in conclusion, um, our mission statement is to help our kids be their best, do their best, and make a difference in the lives of others. And we're very much modeling that for our kids at Menon Center. So we did the Wilmot Warrior Walk in the fall. We had um, a large number of us out for kicks for campers. We we're walking for cystic fibrosis for one of our students who's now in middle school and also um, an arthritis walk for the sibling of one of our current students. So we're modeling it for our kids. We're having fun doing it together and <coughs> enjoying Men and Center. So just in closing, um, the simple act of caring is heroic. Thank you. Any questions? Does anyone have questions? I, I'd just like to make a comment. Thank you for all the work that you're doing with the social emotional learning at Menden Center. It's amazing when you walk into a building, you can feel the culture and the climate, and all the work that you've done and, and, and your whole staff has done around it has been remarkable. So thanks for making it a priority. Thank you. That was great. Thanks, Heather. Thanks, Heather.